Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the MicroBook 2 USB audio interface from Motu. The original MicroBook packed a lot of features into a small portable form factor, and this second generation version offers some user-friendly improvements, including easy to access knobs for level controls, LED meters, an XLR input, and recording rates of up to 24-bit 96 kilohertz. Let's take a look. The slick form factor from the first generation has been preserved. The one pound metal chassis is still about the size of a slightly large paperback novel and gets its power from your computer's USB port. But instead of silver, the MicroBook 2 is now black. Now, more importantly, Motu has added physical knobs for controlling levels on the mic input and the monitor outputs. Of course, you still have complete control over all the MicroBook 2's functions on your computer via the included QMix effects software, but it's really convenient to simply reach over and adjust a knob sometimes. The infinitely turning knobs indent for additional functions. The one on the left is for the mic preamp. If you press it briefly, the 20 dB pad is engaged. Holding it down engages or disengages the 48 volt phantom power for condenser microphones. Handy LEDs show you at a glance if those functions are engaged. On the right is our output knob. Pressing it swaps between controlling the volume for the main outputs, the headphones, or both, again with LED indicators. Also on top of the interface are meters for line ins and outs, the main stereo outs, and our mic and guitar inputs. The mic input is an XLR input right on the front, and the quarter inch high z guitar input is right beside it with the headphone monitor on the right. On the back is the USB 2.0 connection, balanced quarter inch outputs, and additional mini stereo output. Two balanced quarter inch line inputs are also on the back along with a mini stereo input. You cannot use the quarter inch and the mini inputs at the same time. So when you're using the mini input, unplug the quarter inch cables or vice versa. There's also a SPDIF digital output on the back as well. So even though it's small, you can actually use the MicroBook 2 to record four tracks simultaneously. For example, a guitar on the high Z input, a stereo keyboard on the line inputs, and a vocalist on the mic input, again, all at the same time. To create latency-free monitor mixes and to use the DSP, EQ, and Dynamics on the MicroBook 2, you'll use the accompanying QMix FX software. Let's take a look at how that works on a MacBook Pro. Before you get to QMix FX, though, you'll want to fire up the audio MIDI setup located in the Utilities folder. Select the MicroBook 2 from your menu options on the left, then select Output, and in the pull-down menu just beneath, select AUX 1 and 2. Now, while we're here, we can look at our speaker configuration as well. I only want the mains to go to my speakers, so that's the only option I have checked. We're working in stereo rather than a surround configuration, and so, yep, the left is main one and the right is main two. Now when we head over to QMix FX, the output of our DAW shows up on aux one and two, and we can get a blend of that signal and our inputs to create a no latency mix for our performers using these virtual faders. To do that, we'll set up submixes and route them to different outputs, and QMix FX offers four independent stereo submixes to work with. Click on the Outputs tab and you'll get three options. We'll have the mains look at Mix 1, those will be the studio monitors. The line outs look at Mix 2, which we can send to a headphone amp for a guitar or bass player. And the phones look at Mix 3 and we can feed that to our vocalist. The reason for the separate mixes is that our players may want different balances when they play. Vocalists, for example, often need to hear a lot of themselves in the headphones to get the pitch right but the producer and the guitar player may not want to hear the vocal that loud. So that's why we tailor separate submixes to route to the mains and the line outputs for them. Now keep in mind that you'll have to turn off the input monitoring in your software or you'll get both the latency-free mix from QMix FX and the delayed output back from your DAW at the same time. And the timing difference from this double monitoring can really throw you off. In Logic, for example, when you're using QMix FX, you'll want to turn software monitoring off 
in the audio preferences. As the name implies, QMix Effects also offers some latency-free DSP effects processing in the form of dynamics, also known as compression and limiting, as well as EQ. That processing can go on either the inputs or the outputs, so if you want to commit the EQ and compression to your recording in the DAW, you can do that by putting the processing on the input side. If you want to compress or EQ the signal for your player's monitors or to send to outboard gear, then you'll do that on the output side. To set your EQs and compressors, you'll click the input or output tab and then the focus button on the channel you want to process and then you're in business. Personally, I don't do a lot of EQ on the recording side of things, preferring to keep the options open during the mix stage, but it can be helpful to cut some low end out if you're getting a little mechanical hum or something like that. And if you do choose to sculpt the sound a little bit with EQ while tracking, the seven band British style EQs sound quite good, very musical for DSP EQs in this price range. Once you get your routings and processing settings the way you like for a specific recording session, you can easily save the configuration so that it can be instantly recalled. QMix FX also offers some useful and very cool looking audio analysis tools, including FFT analysis, an oscilloscope, an XY plot, phase analysis, and even a tuner. In addition, the Microbook 2 also ships with Motu's AudioDesk DAW software. And one final thing I'd like to point out about the Microbook 2 is that unlike the original Microbook, the independent headphone and line-out routing means that you can DJ with this interface. I can assign my QMix to the headphones or even a set of DJ booth monitors plugged into the line outs and those are completely separate from the main outs for the mix. We tried it out with Native Instruments Tractor software and it worked perfectly. And as any DJ will tell you, the smaller and lighter your gear is, the better and in that department the Microbook 2 certainly delivers. So hopefully that gives you a reasonable overview of the Microbook 2. Motu has kept the terrific form factor from the original version and added significant improvements to make a more versatile, user-friendly version that's an especially good fit for laptop music makers and DJs. I'm Rob from B&H and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.